Why does Nintendo hate Waluigi? Now let's get this straight. Waluigi is loved by many Nintendo fans, and he's had his fair share of appearances in Mario games. Or has he? Ever since Mario Tennis for the N64, Waluigi has been treated like a side character and nothing more. Now there's tons of side characters in the Mario franchise, so what sets Waluigi apart from the rest? Why do so many Nintendo fans like Waluigi? Waluigi, our tall, mischievous purple friend that has been with us for over 20 years, and he just can't stop getting attention from Nintendo fans. Meme culture aside, he has many attributes that make him stand out from the rest. He's Wario's partner in crime, but he's got a bit more class and formality than Wario. He's Luigi's nemesis, but he's got more determination and bravery than Luigi. He's his own unique person. His state of mischief and self-pity is driven by everyone neglecting him the love he deserves, which is what makes him so relatable amongst this new generation. He is simply misunderstood. To Waluigi, there is no morally right or wrong. Life is a race, and to him, game is game. So, with all of Waluigi's sneaky attributes, why hasn't he gotten his own game? He's one of the best characters to make an in-depth, story-driven, action-adventure-style video game. I mean, just think of all the strange abilities he has in each game. He can dance, he can swim through the air, and he even has Armit Purple? Imagine the platforming challenges you could create in a Waluigi game with all of his unique abilities. Give him a tennis racket to slap enemies with instead of just stomping on them like every other Mario game. It seems as though Nintendo wants to keep him confined in the shadows of hated side characters. And believe it or not, there just might be a reason for this. Back in 2000, during the development of Mario Tennis, Luigi needed a rival opponent, similar to how Wario was to Mario. Also, in general, Wario needed a doubles partner at the time. And who did they come up with? The striking, the fabulous, Waluigi. Except, Nintendo wasn't allowed to take credit for designing such a beautiful character. That privilege belongs to a software planning company called Camelot. You see, Camelot specializes in designing sports titles. Not only did they help Nintendo create the Mario Tennis games, but also the Mario Golf series. And their team of designers is solely responsible for creating Waluigi. Despite Camelot working with Nintendo, Waluigi was never created by Nintendo, which technically means they don't own him, which is probably why he's not in Smash. Although, 90% of the DLC isn't owned by Nintendo either, so that's a bunch of crap. Nintendo, give us Waluigi in Smash. Okay, so Nintendo might not own 100% of the rights to Waluigi, but so what? I mean, he's in Mario Kart, and that's not a sports game. Is there a list of games that he can't be in? And if so, what are they? And why doesn't Nintendo just buy the rights to Waluigi from Camelot? They've got billions and billions of dollars to spend, so why not go out with a bang and embrace the wah? Well, the truth is, we don't know. There's been no history of Nintendo ever wanting to make a Waluigi game. There's been no data mines or, or leaks or anything. Even Waluigi's twisted companion Wario got his own series called Wario Land on the Game Boy. And not only that, but he got an entire spin-off series called WarioWare. All of this while Waluigi gets nothing? There's Luigi games, there's Yoshi games, there's a Toad game, there's Donkey Kong games, there's Diddy Kong games, there's even a Princess Peach game, but no Waluigi. I don't know about you, but it seems like Nintendo is purposely neglecting Waluigi. If they were to listen to their fanbase and actually realize how many people love Waluigi, they could make millions of dollars. And if they did listen to their fanbase, they would have already bought Waluigi off of Camelot by now, or at least presented the idea of a Waluigi game to them. It's true that Nintendo does like to wait for as long as possible to release something, but come on, it's been 23 years, and if Nintendo won't give you an answer, then I will right now. The reason they haven't made a Waluigi game yet is because they don't want to. What? Not because they don't like Waluigi or because they don't have the budget or the time, it's just because they don't want to. I mean, there could be a completely different reason, but all evidence says otherwise. Now, there are some incredibly well-made fan games out there centered around Waluigi, games that have heart and soul poured into them. There's also Waluigi's Taco Stand, which until a few weeks ago, I believe to be an official Nintendo game. Don't ask. There's also a bunch of really cool ideas out there of what a Waluigi game would look like. And today, I want to top my Waluigi story on the rest of the competition. Listen closely. Okay, so for the story, I want depth. I want engaging cutscenes that paint a masterpiece in the player's mind. But to make a story, we need a character, a problem, and a motive. For example, Bowser kidnaps Peach, and since Mario likes Peach, well, I mean, that's already motive enough. But for this game, we need to go deeper. So we've got our main character, our protagonist, the good guy. 
Except Waluigi isn't a good guy, but he's also not completely evil either. So a simple course of action is to make him change into a better person during the playthrough of the game, right? Wrong. You see, we can't change Waluigi's inner personality too much because then, well, he just wouldn't be Waluigi anymore. This also makes character development much more difficult. Waluigi is mean and mischievous. He lives in a subconscious state of despair and depression. His only coping mechanism is to cheat and to cause mischief. On the inside, he's lonely, and life is unfair. What he truly seeks is change. But he doesn't want to fix himself. He wants to fix the world. He's tired of being a misunderstood genius. He seeks validation from everyone, and the only way he can do that is to alter the minds of every conscious being. He wants to rewrite the very fabric of existence in his favor. By erasing the lines between right and wrong, he can finally screw you over in a game of tennis without looking like a jerk, without looking like the bad guy, without being misunderstood. He isn't doing this to put the world in balance or because society is in the wrong. He's doing this for his own selfish desires. Now, he doesn't seek world domination. No, 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 that, that's more of Wario's thing. Plus, Waluigi has more self-respect than that. He also doesn't want to hurt anyone, but if people try and stop him, which they will try, then so be it. Waluigi's stubborn personality won't let anything keep him from his goal, so he'll have to manifest whatever bizarre powers he has to pave his own path. It's Waluigi against the world. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Waluigi game. Now, of course, there's still some things we need to work out. How exactly is Waluigi going to change the entire world's perception of good and evil so that he can escape his own self-pity? There needs to be some kind of powerful object that either grants you wishes or gives you some kind of special ability. So I immediately began to run down the list of Mario power-ups, and the most powerful one was the Superstar. There's gotta be something out there that lets you rain chaos and discord on the Mushroom Kingdom and maybe destroy everyone, right? Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix for the Nintendo GameCube?! Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix was a game in which you would, well, dance. The opening cutscene features Waluigi stealing the four sacred and powerful music keys. He claims that with the music keys, he will basically hypnotize everyone and rule the world. Okay, I know it's a long shot, but bear with me. The game never really specifies what power the music keys hold. I mean, other than the power of music. But even then, Toad and Bowser go on to claim how terrible things can happen if the music keys are used. In my opinion, I think it would be a super fun gimmick to reuse these assets in a Waluigi game and maybe add some lore behind them. The game doesn't go too far in depth on what the power limitations to the music keys are. As far as we know, they could act like Infinity Stones, but with a musical twist. And if Waluigi collects all the music keys, he can finally fix the world's unfairness. Our next problem is, who exactly is going to try and stop Waluigi? And we don't want common enemies like Goombas and Koopas, that's boring. The real common enemy will be every Mario character. Not in the flesh, but a shadow version of them. A mere projection of everyone that Waluigi has once bullied. They're all nagging at the inside of Waluigi's brain. Dark versions of each character trying to sway his spirit off the beaten path of destiny. This is not only a battle for his desires, but a battle of the soul and mind. Waluigi will make his way through each kingdom, fending off these lifeless puppets and searching for each music key. And once he almost has them all, the final boss is... Wario his trusted companion, his lifelong friend, trying to stop us from fulfilling our dream. The battle ensues. A heart-wrenching fight between two sidekicks that have known nothing but schadenfreude, dueling for the sake of Waluigi's own personal standards that he believes to be correct. Of course, Waluigi stands as the victor of this fight, having exhausted all of Wario's energy, but not killing him completely. Remember, this is a Nintendo game. With all four music keys in hand, he starts to use them, but he pauses, and... He thinks for a moment. He looks around at all the chaos and pain he's caused everyone, and his eyes finally land on Wario's tired body. This is not what he truly desires. He realizes that he never wanted any of this. He never wanted to change the world. He just wanted to fit in. You can't get everyone to like you, and that's just a universal law. To change the world is to disrupt the natural flow of life, no matter if it's for the good or the evil. There was nothing wrong with the world, but there was also nothing wrong with Waluigi. He was just being himself. With this newfound clarity, Waluigi casts aside his foolish desires and instead uses the music keys to reset all the events that happened in-game. He wakes up being the only one to remember what had happened, so he decides to face each new day with more mischief than ever. He's only got one life, so might as well spend it doing what he does best. 
The end. Nintendo would never make this, but even if they did, this is still probably far from what it would look like. Miyamoto would definitely prioritize gameplay over story, and we'd be left with a Waluigi game that's even drier than Mario Strikers Battle League, if you can even compare the two. Anyways, thank you for watching until the end, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.